was that? I know she was so shy. Hello, welcome to the video. This one's about my time with Captain Beefheart and the Magic Band. <laughs> very minimal input with Captain Beefheart but I was agent for the Magic Band featuring John Drumbo French from 2013 till their farewell tour in 2019 we just beat the Covid so we'll get to that later before we go anywhere I ought to point out that I've actually got Covid at the moment I've got a test resort here somewhere if I can find it it's underneath a pile of papers because uh, there we go yes COVID positive. The strange thing is that I felt worse about 10 days ago and I tested a couple of times and it was negative and then I got slightly better and I was going to go to London this last Wednesday to meet my son and I thought I'd better have a test for a ghost because I still didn't feel right and sure enough I was positive. But who am I to argue with science? Now anyway, enough about COVID and about pandemic Demics and all that, let's get on with the Captain Beefheart and the Magic Band. with the Magic Band was back in 1972-1973 when I was staying in Chelmsford to do my law degree. There's a, another video in which I talk about how I got into the music business which goes into all that. Um, but basically I was staying in this house in Rittle with these older students and um, they were much more into the jazzy and arty things than I was. I was just a bit of a newbie I think you call it nowadays. I just bought Hunky Dory by David Bowie when I went for my interview for the law course and and I was into that sort of thing in T-Rex and what have you so I was a bit not really a beef art person but they got me into Captain beef art into that sort of thing into all sorts of druggy things um, for which I'm now out of all that let me tell you now apart from all the medications I have to take for my illnesses high blood pressure and I had a heart operation six years ago now so but, but I feel fine apart from having COVID. But let's not go into that again. Forget the COVID. Right. I can remember we went to see Captain Beefheart. I think it was in 1972 around Christmas time. Could have been 73. I can't remember. Because it was a long, long time ago. And I went to see Captain Beefheart there with them. And I remember it was a very long show when we went out afterwards. And uh, we got very drunk. And then for many years I was a fan. Not a huge fan, but quite interested in Captain Beefheart and the Magic Band. <laughs> Whistling down low, and piped like clacks by the old scarecrow.
actually. 2012 it would have been, I was running an agency based in Shoreditch well I was sharing an office with somebody in Shoreditch and I decided to call my agency the Shoreditch Music Agency and we were doing The Ruttles featuring Neil Innes and John Halsey. Pretty thing. <laughs> Gandalf Murphy and Slambovian Circus of Dreams. A few more bands, few more acts. And I remember John Keenan, my friend in Leeds, who's a promoter in Leeds, asked me online whether I'm interested in finding work for, for Captain Beefheart's Magic Band, who had basically reformed for all, all tomorrow's parties, and they kept going and occasionally toured the UK. Now, they'd done their own tours before then. First of all, I was dealing with two people. I was dealing with John French, who was the drummer and the musical director for a lot of the stuff in the early days with Captain Beefheart, and Denny Worley, who was a slide guitarist, I think was on um, Batman, Oh, I'm told with names, but he was like a slag guitarist, he was on the later tours. So, with Captain Beefheart, and they were quite slightly suspicious of everyone, they were certainly suspicious of me, they're also a Americans, they're used to dealing with, I mean basically, Captain Beefheart and the Magic Band were always bigger outside the United States than they were in the United States, so these guys who were in California basically, they lived there, they were used to dealing with Californian people, Californian ideas and the way things are done there. So anyway, I got to go to the tour. It wasn't the easiest thing to do in the world. They were very, the whole thing had to be exactly how they wanted it. And they had a very strange way of doing things. They came over here, they stayed with somebody in near Aldershot. This particular person drove them around and he provided the back line. So, they didn't have any of their own stuff, so they used what he had. He drove them everywhere, so we had to factor in all of this. And the costs, because they had to pay for where they were staying, almost like a sort of a commune type of thing, but it's only a temporary thing. So they were paying for that, so that had to be factored in. And then they would use that as their base and then drive around. And because they're, by this time, they're all in the late 60s, early 70s, they couldn't drive too far. They, they, they wanted days off. Basically, when Captain Beefheart died, John French took over vocal duties and he was singing in the Beefheart style. I wouldn't say he was copying Beefheart, he was doing it in his style, because he was doing it his own way. It's very hard to do, so anyway, they need days off. And then of course, when he came over here for the traveling, going on the plane and everything, he found he often had colds. So when we were doing tours, because I did his first tour, I think I was dealing with Denny Worley mainly for the first tour. A lot of it was done through phone calls. But they, because they were in the United States, well, the West Coast of the States, and I'm here, it's like way out of time. So everything that we did would have been after I'd stopped work. So it would all be in my own time. So, and, I'm, and I was never really that keen on doing stuff in my own time. But with them, it's one of the things you have to. And it was like an almost daily thing. We got on reasonably well. It was a bit fraught, I'll be honest with you. It wasn't the easiest money that I've earned. But again, it was dealing with people who were musical heroes. I mean, these people were like, you know, the top musicians and they were so meticulous in what they did. So they would rehearse and rehearse and rehearse and everything had to be no perfect. And when they came off stage, often they'd be saying, oh, you paid a bum note in halfway through this and that. And nobody would notice, but they might be like, oh, traumatized because one of them played a bum note or something. And it would be, they were just really into it. And also, let's be fair, they're also into making money because they never made anything from Captain Beefheart. He paid them a very little. When the, the beef art thing ended, they never really made much. They made more by being, I think, in this reunion um, playing here than they ever did back in the day. So they insist that everything being like, they wanted to earn the maximum they could and they did all the merchandising. And so often if they, and also they wanted the hotels cheaply and they had their own ideas about how to book hotels and I obviously had my own ideas and I prefer to do everything online 
and they want everything done by phone and it's... Anyway, we got on well enough. Um, eventually, John and I became friends. John French and I became friends. But then, at the end of it, for their farewell tour, we did the farewell tour, and by which time it was only John French, and he had employed musicians who played in previous tours. So it was really just him. So the idea that it was the Magic Band reunion was wearing a bit thinner, and he yet knew this. By the end of it, it was apparently much more musically perfect, but less authentic, because um, Mark, the bass player, Mark Boston, his real name was, he was quite large, and he um, found it hard to walk, and he had heart problems, so he dropped out. Um, because basically John said it was too much of a risk to bring him over because he would have to have more days off because it was like so. So we got a, a really good bass player who wasn't obviously in the Magic Band. So it, it was less authentic towards the end. So we did the farewell tour before Covid. Then John and I were talking about it and I eventually persuaded him to do an evening with John Drumbo French, where he would go to art centres and things and play the drums and talk about the beef art days. I would point out that he'd written this book, which is a, which I'll fetch, hang on. He wrote this huge book about his days with Captain Beef Art, and he, it's only like a few years, but it's so detailed and he interviewed people, and if you get a chance to get it, it's uh, worth getting old to buy mine, because uh, there were no such thing as free copies. This is a hardback, cost me 20 quid. Most, I must be honest with you, <laughs> it's so dense I haven't actually read most of it yet, but it's, um, well yet, I probably never will. He was always very dubious about talking about it, he said if people want to know about it, he's a bit fed up just talking about the same old things, things that happened like 50 or more years ago. So he really wasn't that keen at first on doing this evening with John French, but then I persuaded him that he could put it into almost like a masterclass, a music masterclass, and he could go through all his life basically, because he went on to do interesting things, he did some things by himself and with Henry Kaiser and Richard Thompson afterwards. And so, so he had quite an ex exciting life, but he also, as, as well, had, he, 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 like a lot of these guys who were like um, archetypal musicians, I know that Jerry Lee Lewis's band of people like that, when they weren't on stage playing to in front of thousands of people, were actually security guards or things like that. I think John did things like that. And so they never had a lot of money. And so every penny counted. So I talked him into doing this thing and we got it together and I gave him ideas and we discussed it quite a lot. We were friends by stage. And then there's a thing on Facebook where he posted something on one of his um, pages about Frank Zappa, a quote from Frank Zappa. And I said jokingly, I thought, the day I take advice from musicians about what to do with my life will be a sad day or something. And he took umbrage at this and unfriended me on Facebook. And that's the last time really we spoke. And I think I did send him an email to ask about this tour thing. And then basically the COVID thing started. I don't think he replied, or if he did reply, it was a very terse reply. I think that was the end of our friendship really. Although if he's watching this, and I'm sure he will, because the thing about beef art is, it's like all these things. Every time you do something like this, the people who are the die-hard fans, A, know a huge more than I do about it. So what I'm, I mean, even though I was working quite closely with the members of the Magic Band and John French, I am a total outsider. And they, and these people who know every track and every album and when it was recorded and etc. and all that sort of stuff, which I've never really been one for the, my new time of rock and roll. I'm more for the experience, the excitement of it all. But I reckon I've been to probably more um, shows of the Magic Band in the UK from 2013 to 2019 than anybody else. Because being the agent, especially the first few tours, I went to practically all the gigs. And then towards the end I stopped going, but I still did the London shows and the odd thing in Brighton or wherever. So there you go, this is it. So this is my story about my days with Captain B Fire and the Magic Band. Rambly, if you like it, please like it down below. Please comment, let me know what you think. Subscribe, press the notification bell. Let's get going. This is one of my things on okay, KFI. Because I've got COVID, I was supposed to be doing a walk in Broadstairs. I'm supposed to be going to Brighton and doing a walk there. And all sorts of places, like, all sorts of exciting ideas I, I've had. But they're all on hold now. But I will be doing more walks. It's taken me a long time to do this one because I'm an outsider. 
people who are really into the Magic Band and Captain Beef are, are going to watch this and go, oh, it's a travesty, this guy is a waffler, he knows nothing, which is probably true. But that's part of my charm, don't you think? If you think so, like it, subscribe. See you next time. Thank you very much for watching. And um, may the force be with you. Is that what they say? No, probably not. Goodbye.